Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to episode two of the Bulldog Alley podcast. It is Tuesday, May 3rd. I am your co-host, Cole Forsman, joined by Asher Ali. What's up? Asher, how are you doing? It's finals week. You're a senior. How's things going? Yeah, uh, things are going pretty well. Uh, you know, just finishing up some, like, last-minute papers and stuff. Um, you could turn those in, hopefully, in the next 24 hours, and then I should be good to go to walk. So uh, that will be a lot of fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Definitely kind of a bittersweet moment or week for sure. But uh, I mean, I'm excited to be here with you and still kind of live as if I'm, I'm, I'm a Zag for just another week. Great to hear. Congratulations to you and all the other seniors out there listening. Um, congrats on your four years of hard work and um, good luck in the future. So we can kick off the show. Uh, I know, Ashley, you wanted to shout out someone who you had the chance to interview, a women's basketball player who's done well for herself overseas professionally. Yeah, shout out, uh, shout out former Zag Zakira Rice. Uh, Zakira was a was in her last year here at GU, my freshman year, so three years ago. And that's how crazy time flies. Um, I got the chance to interview her a couple times for some articles, and she was always super cool to talk to. Um, and then she was also just like a straight hooper, man. Like she, I remember she was like a pivotal part of that team my freshman year that took down number three Stanford in the kennel. Um, I got a chance to cover that game. That was really cool. And she was just, you know, she was just a, a, an animal on, on the court. It was really cool to watch. And it's really cool to see that that game has translated to the professional level for her. Um, she just won her second championship um, in the Finnish Basketball Association. Um, and when she won it as a rookie or the two years ago now, um, she actually was the MVP of the, uh, of the playoffs. So this season, she was also a pivotal part of her team's success. And I just want to give her a quick shout out for, you know, two championships in three seasons is no, is nothing to scoff at. That's pretty dang impressive. So, uh, yeah, shout out to her. Yeah, she's definitely building a nice career overseas, as do many Zags, uh, both on the men's and women's uh, side of the court. But from the past to now the future, the men's side of things, uh, the Zags, what somewhat quiet offseason uh, was sort of disrupted this last Sunday when they landed two future Zags, uh, LSU transfer Efton Reed and 2023 class four-star recruit Dusty Strummer. Uh, Efton Reed, we'll start off with him. He was a former five-star out of IMG Academy. Uh, like I said, a freshman last season um, at LSU. He you know, was a great interior defensive player. Didn't receive a whole lot of action, though. He was, he was playing behind two uh, NBA hopeful centers, so he should receive a larger role here at Gonzaga. He averaged 6.3 points per game, 4.3 rebounds last season, but once again, he played less than 20 minutes per game. Um, and yeah, just a big physical presence down low, seven footer. He can really thrive uh, in that Drew Timmy role. And yeah, what do you sort of see on his outlook as a Zag? Yeah, I, I see somebody who's going to uh, really kind of enhance the, uh, the Zags uh, front court um, next season, you know, is looking a little bit slim maybe back there. But now, if you know, let's say Drew Timmy, um, you know, we know Chet Holcomb's probably gone. And if, if Drew also decides to leave, uh, you know, we had Anton Watson back there. Not a couple Watson with another solid big uh, like Efton is that's that's huge. So giving them both the opportunity to shine um, on the defensive side of the ball where they're both uh, pretty prominent um, is going to be fun to watch. Uh, Efton is, you know, he's a developing shot blocker, I'd say. Uh, I believe he blocked 5.6% of his attempts last season, which ranked uh, top 140 in college basketball. But he was also somebody who kind of procured a lot of personal fouls. And he averaged 3.3 per game in under 20 minutes of action. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that's nothing new for uh, Mark Few. Mark Few definitely has experience uh, coaching, coaching bigs up to play smart defense, not just hard defense. Uh, LSU was known for playing hard defense. Uh, and it's kind of a shame to see that team, which was really that was a, that was a really gritty team. They were kind of fun to watch, even though it was one game of the tournament. Um, they they were pretty fun to watch, but you know, unfortunately, with Will Wade departing, um, they you know it's kind of left the squad. I think without any scholarship players for the 2022-2023 season. Um, and now Efton, you know that that led Efton to join the transfer portal, and then he committed to Gonzaga, which is great news for us. Not as great news for LSU as their. Uh, as their program's kind of in limbo at the moment, 
But uh, also Efton, you know, he's more of a, a guy shooting around the rim. I believe he shot 51% last season. Um, but he's not afraid to shoot from beyond the arc either. Uh, he took 20 attempts last season. Uh, those numbers could tick up a little bit um, this year, but depending on, I guess, I, I think it's going to depend a lot on what the backcourt looks like um, next season for Gonzaga. But it should be fun to see how he kind of gets inserted into the lineup. Yeah, I mean, you talked about defensively, him and Anton Watson, that length um, in the front court, that that's invaluable for the Zags, um, rim protection. And then offensively, you know, we, we play at a much faster pace than LSU does, so it'll be very interesting to see. Uh, how he thrives in that role at the five spot, whether or not uh, Drew Timmy does come back or not, which I mean, Drew Timmy and Efton Reed, that's, that'd be a fun combo, even though the spacing might not support that idea. Uh, it's certainly fun to think about. But on to the next year's class, 2023, as I alluded to, Dusty Stromer, uh, four-star recruit out of Sherman Oaks, California, six foot six guard, 180 pounds. Uh, definitely a solid three-point shooter. He averaged around 20 points per game at Notre Dame High School. Uh, he committed to Gonzaga over UCLA, Arizona, and Houston, so definitely a big get. Uh, even though the Zags' current recruiting class may be looking a little thin, they definitely shore up the future, uh, Dusty Stromer, and sort of get a glimpse as to what the future might hold in that backcourt. Yeah, this I think this is a, a huge pickup for GU um, as far as commitments go, just because, um, you know, Dusty, as a 2023 high school graduate, um, him committing to us this early, um, it kind of sets us ahead of a lot of other programs um, right now who are still trying to trying to get their first 2023 recruit. One of those programs being UCLA, who some will say we maybe stole Stromer from, um, seeing as he's right in UCLA's backyard. At, uh, at Notre Dame High School, um, which is like right around where I played. And I know Notre Dame because um, they, they had a back in the day when I, when I played high school baseball, uh, that was where Hunter Green played. He's now a pitcher for the Reds who throws 102. Um, but it wasn't fun for me when he was, even when we were younger, he threw 95 and I was 15. That was, that was no fun. Anyways, uh, Dusty though, uh, yeah, like you said, he's a, he has that, he has the talent. He projects well as a three point shooter, as a, as a distance shooter guy. But um, he's also pretty, pretty dang good on both the boards and perimeter defense. He's, um, you know, his size at six foot six allows him to kind of reach beyond uh, some of maybe the small forwards or power forwards that he'll go up against. Um, you know, we'll have to add a little bit more size gets to the college level. At, I think just under 190 pounds um, might want to add a little bit more size just to kind of box out a little bit better. But on the perimeter, his length is definitely quintessential to his ability to gain steals and helps you get out in transition. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what Gonzaga's backcourt looks like. There's two seasons out from now, um, you know, with guys like Hunter Salas, Nolan Hickman, and Dominic Harris all there right now, for sure. We don't know who's going to stay, who's going to go, but like, let's say Salas stays behind, right? Um, for another year, man, that, that like, you know, we just talked about how elite the front court will be next year if it's Watson and, uh, and Efton. Ne two years out, if it's Salas and Dusty, Man, that defense is going to give other teams headaches for sure. Um, I, I I would be really excited to see that. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of cookie stealing. You know, stealing from the top of the cookie jar, if you will. Um, and that'll be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, certainly. Um, and it's like you said, huge to get a guy uh, early, even if it's you know when you're out. It gives us sort of a blueprint for what the future could hold. Uh, we kind of saw this year, Braden Huff, even though it was as early as commit as uh, Dusty was. Uh, just sort of, you know, gives us a little backbone for the future, certainly. But uh, even then now, another Zag uh, potential recruit or commit, I should say, in the transfer portal, Kevin McCuller Jr., uh, who also around the same time announced that while he is considering the NBA draft heavily, um, his sort of draft projection has him as sort of a second round to undrafted prospect. So he has announced that if he were to come back to – the college level, it would be either for GU or Kansas. Um, of course, last season, he was at Texas Tech. He averaged 10 points, four boards, and three assists as a sophomore. Um, we just talked about Dusty being a, a great defender. Ken McCuller is right in that same uh, category. He's six foot six, 205 pounds, um, lengthy, and he would be a redshirt junior next year. So another experienced guy on the roster would certainly help. Um, what do you sort of see, Kevin? Should he come to GU, what he could add uh, to that front court, back court on the wing? 
he adds he adds he adds he adds size to the wing for sure. Um, it's it'll be you know I I love how Mark Few loves to go after guys who especially in the transfer portal are strong in the defensive end, not just guys that we've gotten like like Efton and, and potentially Kevin here, but you know other guys who we didn't even get. They, Mark Few is definitely definitely very defensive minded. The guys he wants to go after, and I think that's because he understands that if they can play solid defense in the half court, they can move really well in the transition offense. Um, that kind of moving up the court real quick. You know, they procure a steal that gets us going in motion. Um, and, and, I, and I love that. And McCullough definitely a- adds that to, to Gonzaga. He's, you know, his size definitely stands out. He's, you know, definitely more of the build of like a Julian Strother. Um, his shooting isn't, I wouldn't say it's on that level, but he has other attributes. Like I said, like his defense, um, his, his basketball IQ is pretty dang high for going into his redshirt junior year. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see like just his path in general, um, we were talking a little bit earlier, and I was saying, like, it's it's weird. I don't think I've ever seen this before where somebody's like, hey, yeah, like, you know, this is a new age college basketball. But uh, he's like, yeah, like, I'm committing to the – I'm going to the draft. But if that doesn't work out, I already have two schools picked up that I'm going to decide between if if and if that does not work out. I, I wish him the best. I really hope that it works out for him and that, he, you know, he gets drafted and, and makes, his, makes his money. But, um, you know, and, he, and also he picked two solid programs to come back to if he wants to increase his draft spot. You don't get much better than Kansas and GU. So um, it was just, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting look for sure. Um, but it, it'll be really cool to see, you know, just how it pans out. And if he does come back next year, you know, adding more depth. That's the other thing. Mark Few's not afraid to add more guys, even if we had, like, you know, we have three solid guards, even with those who are leaving. We have three solid young guards. He's not afraid to add another one to the fold and just see how that dynamic kind of plays out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and it is kind of interesting how someone is contemplating the draft or just completely fleeing their school altogether. I'm kind of curious as to how NIL sort of plays a role into that, which is a whole other issue. But like you said, McCullough, not the greatest shooter. He did improve his three-point percentage last season, um, even receiving more minutes, played around 30 per game last season. Um, but yeah, definitely someone to keep an eye on, and we will going forward. I don't, I'm not sure if he announced when he will um, declare his decision if he's going to the draft or not, but we will keep an eye on that. Yeah, it's got to be by Moving June on. 2nd, so <laughs> it's got to be by yeah. June 2nd. <laughs> that is true. Um, moving on now to the Diamond. Uh, more recently, the Zags baseball team had four games in four days, um, including a three-game series against the WCC rival LMU, and yesterday, on Monday, they faced off against in-state rival UW. Um, over the weekend, they took down LMU uh, in that three-game series. They won two out of the three to earn their seventh straight uh, WCC uh, series victory. That first game, they won 5-3 on Friday, uh, including a one of the best two, uh, two-out rallies that you'll ever see uh, in that fourth frame. Uh, Gabriel Hewitt's pitch that day, he had 11 Ks. They lost game two of the series, came back, uh, won to clinch the series 6-5. Um, Owen Wild on the mound had 10 Ks. We kind of talked about him emerging. He might not get enough love as he should in that rotation, but definitely a key cog in the Zags bullpen. And then yesterday they picked up a 5-2 win um, over UW and Alec Gomez's first start of the season. Uh, he tied a career high seven innings pitched, only allowed one and run. Um, and for the Zags offense, Connor Cabales got his first home run of the season. Um, and then they scored three runs in the sixth to sort of break that game open. So certainly a solid four, four day stretch for the Zags. Yeah, real solid. They hold their standing as like the number 11, number 12 team, depending on what, uh, what polls you look at. Cause there's so many out there for college baseball, but um, you know, they're looking really solid. Uh, the bats are coming alive too, which is, which is great to see. They're putting up runs, runs, runs right now. Um, and they're doing it more with the deep ball than usual. This, you know, I think I said last week how they're not a team that's going to really wow you with the, with the, with, you know, with balls over the fence. But I, I, I very much stand corrected in that. Um, I saw a stat today from Gonzaga SID Connor Gilbert, who said that uh, GU's had 15 homers in his last 16 games, where they started the year with their first 26 games, they only had seven. So the bats are coming alive for sure. And even somebody like Cabalas, who hasn't, you know, who hasn't even had a bomb that this year, he's getting in on the action too, which is great to see. Um, you know, they had they started off the week last week kind of tough with a with a really close loss to WSU, but they rallied really well against LMU. Man, that 
that Friday game where Gabe Hughes pitched, it was it was here at Gonzaga. And I, man, maybe one of my few regrets now that I'm graduating is I I, I didn't get to see Gabe Hughes pitch more um, live because, man, that would have been that looked like an absolute master class from him. Uh, just seeing an ace on the bump like that, just wheeling and dealing, I would have been a lot of fun to watch. So I I, I saw highlights and you know I you know I checked the box score and all that, but it doesn't compare to actually going to the ballpark, you know, getting a hot dog, a bag of peanuts, and watching some dude just strike out a bunch of a bunch of LMU guys, um, which gives me a lot of that gives me a lot of joy because I'm one of my best friends with LMU. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, it was regardless though, uh, G is definitely on the path to you know, hopefully uh, secure another WCC title as this is their seventh consecutive uh, seventh consecutive WCC uh, series win. And it, it'll be interesting from here on out. You know, they they definitely, it's definitely an uphill battle though because they're going to be facing tougher and tougher opponents. But uh, they definitely have the pitching staff for it. And the, the lineup's looking dang good too right now. Yeah, the offense coming alive surely helps as of late. Uh, next they got a 10 day break, I believe, as, a, as we record this before they have a three game series against Santa Clara, who sits around the middle of the pack, for the WCC, but can certainly put up a fight that will be a home series. Uh, then they have a one game, one day game against University of Oregon in Eugene, a rematch of last year's, uh, I believe, regional, if I'm incorrect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. OK. And then then they end the season. And, in the highly anticipated three-game series against the University of San Diego, who currently sits near the top of the WC standings as well. Uh, should the Zags hold um, their standing, though, then, I mean, hosting a hosting a regional game in, in Spokane, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that for baseball fans around here, certainly. No, no, it doesn't. I, I think, once again, they're going to be kind of competing with Oregon for who gets to host that regional, though. Um, and you know, who knows, it might come down to who wins that game between the two of them. I mean, it also comes down to like which of those teams wins can win their conference, but uh, you know, the Ducks, the Ducks are very solid this year. Uh, they boast a lineup, their last year's lineup was really young, so they come back with more experience this year. Um, and it'll be really fun to see if Gonzaga can kind of uh get a little bit of revenge on them, hopefully, for, for last year's uh regional action. Um, but yeah, man, baseball is baseball is definitely back in full swing, and I'm here for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then the, the two did score off earlier this year. Um, it was the Zags' first home game of the season. They lost 5-9, and nine, but certainly a lot has changed since March 22nd, as we just alluded to, the offense and the pitching staff remains strong as ever. Now with Alec Gomez hopefully being a more, uh, he receives more action on the mound. Um, who knows you know, how great this team can be going forward. So, uh, yeah. I think that was all the news we had on the mound. Um, yep. You want to go over any of the other NIL stuff? Or... We can, or we, we can do that. We can do that next week if you want. We go, okay. oh, what, oh, let's, let's see what time we're rocking with. Um, we're at like 10 minutes a little while ago. We're at 18 right now. So. Oh, great, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll cut it. Do you want to do the outro? Um, sure. I think, yeah. <sighs> All right, that is all we have for this edition of the Bulldog Alley Episode 2. Hope you guys enjoyed the listen, and once again, good luck to all those seniors and other GU students around campus on finals week. Uh, Push through, finish that essay, recite that presentation one more time, uh, and finish strong, guys. Thank you. Make sure to follow along Gonzaga Nation SI for uh, for more from us and, and and our coworkers, too. A lot of great stuff coming out. All right. Thanks again, Asher, for joining this episode. Yes, sir. You too, Cole.